Hi guys, my name is Ashley and I thank you so much for tuning in today to hear a little message that I would love to give to you. Uh, but first I want to start out with prayer. So Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for the people that are tuning into this video, God. I just ask that you would speak through me to them, Lord. And I ask that you would just speak hope into their lives and show them that you have a good plan for them, a plan to prosper them and not to harm them. So Jesus, I just pray that you would speak through me, Lord, and I pray that you would open up the ears of those listening um, and that your spirit would just speak through this message. We pray this in your name. Amen. So have you ever felt like something was wrong? like had an inkling intuition that something was wrong, but you just kind of ignored it? Well, I came across that feeling when in this past week, I came back from graduation. I just graduated college and I came back from my graduation weekend and I got news that a couple girls that I was with, celebrating with, got tested positive for the coronavirus. So in typical fashion, I had to come up with the question, I had to think of this question, do I want to get tested and potentially deal with the ramifications of being positive, or do I want to just kind of brush it off, ignore it, act like it's not there, and then never know if I really needed the healing that I needed. So I decided to go with the first option and get tested because I decided that I would rather know if I had a problem with something than, and get help for it rather than never know that it's there and just let it fester. So I got my booty to the testing center and they stuck a tube up my nose and it was very painful for like five seconds. I wouldn't even say it was painful. It was uncomfortable. A lot of people are like making a big deal out of, it's just like excruciating pain. It's really not. It was just uncomfortable. But after getting the test, I was so relieved just driving home. I was relieved that I chose not ignorance, but chose knowledge. And a couple of days later, they told me that I was negative. Um, but even if I were positive, if I was positive, it would have been nice to know if I needed healing in that place. Because we'll never know if we need healing somewhere if we never know that we are sick. And you can't heal from something that you don't know is there. And so I wanna get into the scripture today for this, but specifically, I just want us to talk about what we are turning a blind eye to in our lives that is affecting us right now that we need to bring to the light in order to get healing um, from these things that are affecting us subconsciously that we don't even know about. Um, but we do know about it, we think about it, it comes up, but we choose to ignore it. And I just, I don't think ignorance is bliss. I think knowledge is power. And so when we just acknowledge these things that we need healing from, we are able to have the Lord's power come over those areas of our lives and bring healing and wholeness and freedom into every area of our being. So the scripture that I wanted to touch on today is Ephesians 5, 8 through 13. And it's, for you were once in darkness, but now you are light. You are in the light in the Lord. And that's Ephesians 8. And then I go to 13, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. So first, this is going to be an uncomfortable question, but I want you to think, like, what are you sitting in the dark with? Um, is it that your parents got a divorce and you believe that you are going to get divorced because the statistics are against you because it's you're twice maybe three times I think it's you're twice as likely to get a divorce if your parents are divorced versus if you grew up in a home with parents who stayed together is that the lie that you're sitting with in the darkness and then because of that you are 
choosing relationships, you're settling because you don't believe that you're worthy of a healthy, wholesome relationship? Or do you have an obsessive relationship with food that you've masked, that you kind of comes up that you're like, uh, I'm a little obsessed about this. I'm a little, I think about food all the time. I'm very obsessed with my weight, but you mask it every time that comes up, like that conviction, you go, no, I'm just healthy. I'm just trying to pursue health. Or do you have something like emotional or physical abuse that you've just masked out of your childhood because it was so painful but it comes up, the Lord brings it up, it wants you to get healing from it, but you just mask it down. You want to run away from it. You want to act like it didn't happen. I don't know what you are sitting in the dark with. I don't know what it is. I think we all have different things that we're sitting with in the dark, but we cannot heal from things that are in the darkness. We can only heal from things that are brought into the light, that are exposed into the light. And so what I want to say is it's, it's easier to ignore these things. Like that's the reason why for most of our families and relationships, we have so much brokenness in the world because we haven't brought these things to the Lord. We haven't let him heal us. Um, it's easier to ignore. It's easier to ignore if you have the coronavirus. Like if you're literally like, if it's obvious that you have the coronavirus, and you're not getting like the treatment that you need or the self-care or even taking a test to know for sure. Like it's easier to just like have all the symptoms and not get help because you just want to ignore it. It's easier to ignore. It's hard to get your butt to the testing center and ask for help. But what happens when we ask for help is freedom happens. Like we are freed from these things when we finally are brave enough to ask for help and so I'm talking about like breaking generational curses and patterns I know that sounds a little weird but they exist like okay addictions when one family member when a parent has an addiction it is statistically speaking that the kid will be most will be the kid will have a an inclination to also develop that addiction or you know divorce i talked about divorce or emotional or physical abuse there are statistics that show that if you have been physically abused then you will abuse your kid so like we see that there are generational curses that pass through families and pass through um, relationships and when we bring these things to the light we break those generational curses. And what I want to tell you today is that it stops with you. Like if you choose to get healing, like this generational curse will stop with you. Like you will not get divorced. You will not abuse your children. You will not get that addiction. You will not pass down that eating disorder because it stops with you. It stops with you. And I really want to speak that over, over your life because I think I think the enemy loves to use statistics to make us feel like our futures are inevitable. Like, man, you know, I've just had such a rough upbringing that there's nothing, like I'm just not gonna have a, a good family life or I'm not gonna have um, a good relationship or I've been cheated on so many times that I'm just not up for a healthy relationship with a guy who loves me and wants the best for me. Like we almost believe these lies and I just don't want us to believe these lies anymore. So this week I challenge you and it's a challenge because man, it is so hard to acknowledge these things. It's so hard. Um, it's really, really difficult. And my heart goes out to you because I know how difficult it is. I am exposing several things in my own life that I ignored for a long time um, because I just thought they would go away, but they haven't. And that's when I was like, I need healing. So this week, I want you to think about what you're sitting in the dark with, what you haven't brought to the light, what you haven't brought to the feet of Jesus yet, because you're afraid. Um, 
and you think that if you just ignore it, it'll just go away, but it hasn't gone away. Um, and it, whether it's a couple months or a couple years or your whole lifetime, um, it's time to bring that to the Lord. It's time to bring that to the light. Um, so what does it look like to expose it? We're supposed to expose it. Um, that's what the word says, expose. Maybe that looks like just telling God, being like, God, in your quiet time, be like, God, I know that you know about this, but I haven't told you about it because I'm scared and it's messy um, and I don't know what to do, but I bring it to you, Lord. I bring it at your feet and I lay this down and I ask for your healing and I ask for your help. I can't do this without you. So please, Lord, lead me to the next steps. It can look like bringing it to the Lord or it can look like bringing it to a trusted friend or a trusted parent. Um, I would say a trusted counselor, but a lot of us aren't going, a lot of us who are dealing with this stuff aren't going to counseling. Like we're not because we just feel like we can do it on our own. Um, if you have a counselor or a therapist you're meeting with, that is incredible. I would bring it to them as well. But if you don't, a trusted friend or the Lord, even if you just bring it to the Lord, that is a huge step, a huge step because then he is going to give you the next steps of how to get help and how to get healing um, but bonus points if you can bring it to a friend or a parent or someone that you just know loves you and wants the best for you um, so I know this sounds terrifying I know it sounds so scary to open up about what we've been running away from but it's actually liberating like, I am so excited for you to experience the freedom that comes from acknowledging our pain so we can actually get healing for it. So I want to tell you that the, gener the generational curse, like, it stops with you. When you, get, when you get this healing, when you bring this to the Lord, your children will not have to deal with the brokenness that you have dealt with. Your children won't stop with you. When you bring it to the Lord, when you bring this all to the light, the divorce stops with you. The eating disorder stops with you. The broken family stops with you. There's just the brokenness. It stops with you. And it then becomes a light. Whatever is exposed to the light becomes a light. Your story will become a light. It will pave the way for your children to walk in freedom. It will pave the way for other people to walk in freedom. You are not a statistic. You're not going to be another statistic. I want to tell you that today. If you choose to bring this to the Lord, he is going to surprise you in mighty ways with his redemptive power because he does not leave stories. I'm literally getting emotional. He does not. When we bring our brokenness and our pain to him, he doesn't leave us, like, the story doesn't end badly. Like, it always ends well. He always uses everything that's even the terrible things that happen to you that you have no control over. He uses it all for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So I want to encourage you in that you're not a statistic. You're not. You're not going to be. And the healing it starts here the second that you bring it to the light is the second that you start your healing journey and so i know this was a lot and i am i'm hoping that this encouraged you to step out of the darkness and into the light so you can finally walk in the freedom that you were always meant to walk in so if this was an encouraging message for you, if this, if I can pray for you in any way, um, I would love for you to just put the, put a comment below. Um, also that's bold too, because you're being like, you know, I don't want you to like feel like you're airing your dirty laundry, but I also want this to be a community where we lift each other up and we encourage each other to be on the path to healing. And so I'm going to close us out in prayer. And I'm so happy that you were able to hang out with me today. So Jesus, um, I thank you so much for this time. Uh, God, I just pray for the healing of everyone who listens to this, Jesus. I pray that you would use these words to speak into their lives and to 
uh, move into their lives and to give them uh, the freedom that you always have wanted your children to walk in. So, Lord, I thank you so much for this time, and I pray this all in your name. Amen. All right, guys, have a good day.